Well, good morning, Calvary. Thanks for tuning in for your word for the day today. My name is Robert. Grateful to have you watching uh, wherever you're watching from at whatever time of day or even whatever day this is. We're grateful to have you plugged into your word for the day. Uh, if you're one of the people that, that thinks about the future and tries to strategize and go, hey, how can we optimize the future? How can I plan ahead for my future? Maybe even thinking about your kids, your grandkids, their future. Uh, know that your, your desire with that is consistent with the heart of a lot of biblical characters that want to plan for future generations and have future hope for them. Um, but the question I have for you in that is where do you place your hope for those future bless blessings and prosperity? Is it in your efforts? Is it in your planning, your diligence, or are you trusting in God with that? Because see, in Psalms chapter 72, we see, uh, actually, it's, it's the end of book three, of, or book two, rather, and uh, book three is about to begin in the book of Psalms. We don't normally talk about that, but there's these big kind of chunks of Psalms that we get to. And as we get to the end of book two in the book of Psalms, um, Psalm 72 represents David kind of thinking ahead and praying for the future. Uh, he's praying for the future of, of the nation. He's praying for his future heirs, for the future king of Israel. He's praying for all of this future blessings that he hopes to see happen. He outlines some of it in detail. But rather than focusing on the exactly what he's asking for and what he's wanting to see happen, I want to read the end of Psalm chapter 72. And starting in verse 18, it says this. It says, Blessed be the Lord the God of Israel, who alone does wondrous things. Blessed be his glorious name forever. May the whole earth be filled with his glory. Amen and amen. The prayers of David, the son of Jesse, are ended. So here, as he's thinking about the future, he's praying for, for prosperity, for blessing, for hope, for his kids, for the future uh, kings of Israel and, and the future line of, of his family, but also his essentially profession there as king, his calling. He pauses and says, the Lord alone does wondrous things. As if to say, we could work as hard as we want. We could plan. I could do all these things, but I can't do wondrous things. The Lord alone does wondrous things. And so I want to ask you to, to consider where are you placing your hope for the future? Maybe not your hope for today, but, but for the future, for future generations, for the future of your life, your, your descendants, if you've got kids or grandkids, where is your hope for them and their prosperity? Because it's really easy to think that you just need to work harder, you need to plan more accurately, you need to strategize well, you need to, to work to make everything happen. And maybe you're caught up in a, a place of really being stressed, trying to control outcomes in different situations. Maybe you're not thinking 50, 60, 70 years or more in the future, but you're thinking five, six, or seven months in the future, and you're working to try and control an outcome in a certain situation. And can I just remind you that the Lord alone does wondrous things? We don't need to stress and, and, and feel like we need to balance every aspect of our life because instead we can trust in the Lord and trust in the fact that He has our future. He has our best interests in mind. He desires to bless and help us prosper in life. And as we seek to have wondrous things happen in our life, we need to acknowledge that the Lord is the one who brings those into our life to start with. Uh, the book of James reminds us that every good and perfect thing comes from the Father above, and He doesn't change. And so today, know that, uh, that God is good, that God knows what's going to happen in your future, and He is seeking to bless and guide you, and you don't have to worry. You don't have to control everything, and you don't have to try and balance every aspect. But instead, learn to trust in God and praise Him for His wondrous deeds. We'll see you next time, Calvary. Have a great day.